I find myself very taken, fascinated by the 2000 album by Common, like Water for Chocolate. I was, we were all aware of Common, I believe. His 21st century work is, it's, it's fairly well known. I remember he even rocked up in John Wick 2 as a, as a hitman. Oh, everyone in John Wick is a hitman, I suppose. This album, um, I never really spent much time with this album, to my memory. Uh, the famous one was 2005's B, which I, I'm not one of my favourite albums, personally. It's fine, whatever, just my pre my preferences and um, it's probably silly priorities, I suppose. With those, the, the time I've been spending with Like Water for Chocolate has been some of the most enjoyable of my week. And to pay tribute to this album, I wanted to share some information about it, just for any viewers here who are not already aware of it. If you are, you're already thinking, well, of course it's great, what are you, what are you talking about here? In which case, that's fine, you can skip this one. The title of the album might be making some sense to you right now. The album's cover photo, 1956 Alabama by Gordon Parks, is a photo of a young black woman in Alabama dressed for church and drinking from a coloured-only drinking fountain. That's the same Gordon Parks who directed Shaft and Shaft's big score, by the way. Reading out from the wiki, here goes. This will just save you the time of having to read through text, I suppose. You can just listen to this in the background while it's still doing something more important. Following 1997's One Day It'll All Make Sense, Common moved to New York City where he began collaborating with the Soul Clarions at Electric Lady Studios. It was there that Amir Thompson, Questlove, who oversaw the album's production, introduced Common to Angelo. Thompson had been doing a great deal of producing there with several members of the Soul Clarions, including D'Angelo. The track Ghetto Heaven Part 2 was originally supposed to be a track on D'Angelo's 2000 album Voodoo, but was traded for Chicken Grease, a track which Common had intended to include on Like Water for Chocolate. Well, it's worth sharing the title, Like Water for Chocolate, you may have recognised that as a famous novel's title. I'll explain the connection here. Well, this, some very fine and generous editor has. The title, Like Water for Chocolate, comes from the 1989 Laura Esquivel novel, Like Water for Chocolate, which is adapted into a the movie of the same name in 1992. I've never seen that film. The phrase like water for chocolate is of Spanish origin, translated como agua para chocolate. In many Latin American countries, hot chocolate is made with water rather than milk. The phrase refers to someone who has reached their boiling point, like water ready to be used to make chocolate. In an interview with Combustible the Poet, Common compared the main character Tita de la Garza's passion for food with his passion for music. Actually, the album is named after a movie of the same title. In the movie, the main character was a really good cook. She would always be cooking for people. Whenever she would cook, she would really put a lot of emotion into it. So when people would eat her cooking, they were able to feel the same emotions she felt while cooking it. You feel me? So this is the same thing. I put all my heart, my mind, and my rawness into these tracks. So I hope that people can feel that when they listen to the album. In an interview on MTV, Common added, I first saw the title and thought that it was really interesting. And I was like, man, this is different. It made me think, what does it mean? And it was appealing to me enough to dig into a meaning for it. So I used like water for chocolate to represent the water side in me, which is a Pisces, and the chocolate represents the soul, the blackness in the music. Another popular interpretation of the album ties in the phrase of the image on the cover of the album, using the word chocolate to symbolise people of dark skin colour, and the words like water to describe the racially provocative concept of providing drinking water of exactly the same likeness for two different races, alludes to the famous image and the themes of race that are found within the lyrical content of the album. Like Water for Chocolate is notable for its Afrocentric themes. It borrows from the Afrobeat genre on the track Time Traveler, a tribute to Fela, Fela being, of course, Fela Kuti, the Nigerian jazz legend. The Tony Allen sampling Heat, Tony Allen, whom Brian Eno claimed was the finest drummer in the world, probably, and the slum village assisted Naga Champa, aphrodisiac for the world. MC Light and Moz Def join Common for the amusing a film called Pimp and The Questions, respectively. In the former, Common sends up his own conscious image of a skit depicting him as a hypocritical woman beater. Like Common's previous two albums, Like Water for Chocolate closes with spoken word recited by Common's father, Lonnie Pops Lynn. A slightly altered version of the album was released after its success on the charts, with the Macy Gray assisted Ghetto Heaven remix TSOI, The Sound of Illadelph, replacing the original. Macy Gray, do you all remember her? I try to say goodbye, but I choke. Try to walk away, but I stumble. Though I try to hide it, it's clear. All my troubles when you are not here. It's a beautiful song.
Like previous albums from Common, the subject matter discussed in Like Water for Chocolate is of a socially conscious nature. Typically, conscious hip-hop's greatest following is underground, and conscious hip-hop artists do not achieve great mainstream success. Yet despite being Common's first commercially successful album, Like Water for Chocolate maintains the same level of concern and social responsibility that had previously been seen in, seen in Common's first three albums. The album contains significant Afrocentric elements which are particularly evident on Time Travel and a tribute to Fela and Time Travel and Reprise. Both tracks discuss the ills of modern society and are tribute to, as I said, Fela Kuti, a pioneer of Afrobeat music and a prominent human rights activist, with Time Travel and Reprise featuring Kuti's son, Femi Kuti. Track 2, Heat, samples Tony Allen, Fela Kuti's one-time fellow band member and co-founder of the Afrobeat genre. Also unique are Payback as a Grandmother and a song for Asada. Payback as a Grandmother is a continuation of the series of stolen moment songs that appeared on One Day the Law Makes Sense, whereby Common weaves a fictional tale in which he pursues a thief, on this occasion the thugs who have robbed his grandmother. Amidst the intricate caper, the song emphasises the importance of family values. As Common says in the song's intro, I don't know what was on your... I'm not going to say that word out, N-word birds that go up to the boat and start robbing old folks. The song ends in a skit involving police officers at the scene of a crime where, breaking out of character, one of the officers can be heard saying, the skit definitely needs more added to it. Someone get Prince Paul on the phone, please. The last remark recognising Prince Paul's reputation as a pioneer of the album skit. A song for Asada chronicles the arrest, trial, incarceration in Cuban political asylum of Asada Shakur, a member of the Black Panther Party, after whom Common named his daughter, Amoye Asata Lin. The spoken word piece at the end of the track is a quote from Asata Shakur. During the album's creation, Common travelled to Havana, Cuba, where he met and talked with Shakur. The excerpt used details Shakur's thoughts on what freedom is and what it means to be free. As she notes, I know a whole more about what freedom isn't than about what it is, because I've never been free. I can only share my vision with you of the future about what freedom is. Asada Shakur, she, she was good friends with Afini Shakur, who was Tupac's mother. Working as both a battle song and self-reflection, the sensuous Nag Champa, aphrodisiac for the world, sees Common proclaiming himself the earth, wind and fire of hip-hop, while admitting by Rakim in short, I've been inspired, a comment which compounds the two very contrasting rap artists. Common goes on to note, The mind is funny, how it's spent on getting it, money. I'm sitting with descendants of Abraham, who say the jam is money, cash, hoes. Nag Champa is one of the rare occurrences in which Common's frequent collaborator, producer Jay Dilla, takes on the role of singer. Common later explained, When I was working on Like Water for Chocolate, I would go to Detroit like two to three times a month. When we would go to JD's basement, we would always burn Nag Champa incense. That's where I got that title from. I was listening to Slum Village a lot, so I was influenced by them. With Nag Champa, which was either the first or the second song for Like Water for Chocolate, we had it for a long time with no chorus. We kept trying, but there wasn't nothing good coming out. I took T3 and them to the studio to work with me on the chorus. T3 started chanting something. He didn't finish, but he had a little idea. JD heard and started really singing it and got it together. Jay had an incredible voice. He actually was going to do a singing album. We used to talk about that when he would stay in LA. Although Questlove of the album was the album's executive producer, a large deal of the production work was handled by JD, aka Jay Diller, of Slum Village and The Unma. Common and JD both hailed from the Great Lakes region, JD from Detroit and Common from Chicago, and were good friends. The track Felonious was even placed on both Like Water for Chocolate and Slum Village's 2000 release, Fantastic, Volume 2. Common also wanted to work with DJ Premier, citing Gangstar as one of his favourite groups to listen to. In an interview with New Jeru Poet, Common described his motivation to work with DJ Premier. Like you said, being that he is one of the most respected producers, I really loved his music throughout the time. Gangstar has always been one of my favourite groups. I've always wanted to work with him. It was time. I connected with him and seen him in a couple of places. I told him that I wanted to work with him. It took a little time to get up with him, but eventually we got up. That was the last song I recorded for Like Water for Chocolate. We released Doing It first, and then the single and video for The Sixth Sense. Then we followed it up with The Light. I'd like to read out it aloud now, to close this piece here, a review from Zephos from October 25th, 2008 in Rate Your Music. Common was an interesting rising star throughout the whole of the 90s, from goofy b-boy to jazz man and to one of the inheritors of the empty East Coast alt-rap thrones, he carved a personal path through an often hostile and rapidly changing musical environment. 
all this while working hard over three albums in the 90s to raise himself as a king of conscious alt-rap. And at long last, all that hard work pays off with what can only be called his magnum opus. He calls on the service of his new buds in the Soul Clarions crew to brew up one of the best produced rap albums ever. Multiple producer fingerprints are all over the album. Diller, Questlove, James Poyser, and it's Diller in particular who proves his genius. The crisp, soulful drums over this are a world of beauty. Diller was just another decent Pete Rock influenced guy before, but he really transformed into a brilliant innovator in Thousand, and this album is covered in evidence of this. But ironically, while the New Guard Soul Cats do great work, the show is stolen by the single DJ premier contribution. The magnificent showstopper that is The Sixth Sense. Common turns it into something of a post-Golden Age anthem for the rap genre, and Primo proves he still has it over ten years past his debut. For the rest, Common finally perfectly embodies the soul man he was trying to be since his second album, making great romantic raps over the sexy and suave beats. He even tells a few amusing stories, especially the dueling No I'll Pimp You. He plays with MC Light on a film called Pimp, Beautiful from start to finish. Probably the best product of a second wave of East Coast rap, too, at least sonically. This is a must-have for anyone interested in soul rap and the height of Common's discography beyond question. I actually might prefer the, uh, the Common's The 94 album when he was Common Sense, possibly, although this is easily a very close second. It's definitely a competition between Like Water for Chocolate or Resurrection, and I must say, Electric Circus, that might creep up there. That's some very interesting stuff also. Anyway, if you're so inclined, do give another listen to Like Water for Chocolate. It will enhance your evening, I am sure. And if you have yet to listen to this album and you are fond of the genre, I think you will find much, much, much to enjoy, and I rather envy you.